Good morning. Welcome back to the Retirement Report. I'm Hank Parrott, your host. With me, my good friend and special guest, Dr. Friday, with Dr. Friday's Tax and Financial Services over in Brentwood, Tennessee. And Dr. Friday, by the way, um, I, as I said, she is an expert when it comes to helping people with tax problems as well. So if you've got, you know, do not hide from the IRS. If you've got an issue with the taxes, she's a great person to help you with that. She works as an enrolled agent. She's able to uh, represent you with the uh, IRS and help you. There's a lot of good programs out there right now to help people, right? And you can't really get into any of this until you have got the IRS out of your way. Because right. if you're putting money into a 401k and you owe the IRS, the IRS can come back and say nada. We, you know that's that's against the rules um, unless you're in a payment plan and they've already agreed. But mm -hmm. if you're going to make a deal or anything else, you've got to get all that taken care of so you can really concentrate on putting the money towards what's going to work for you. Then give it to government with penalties and interest. There you go. And it, you know one of the things when it comes to risks in general, this is one of those areas again with good planning. We look at what the risks are that you have so that we can help you, all right, with that. Think of the things that you insure. You insure your car. If you get in a car accident, you want to make sure there's money there to take care of the vehicles as well as any, any potential injuries and that type of thing. Home insurance, the same kind of thing. We insure those big items, those, those big risks that we have to make sure that we're not going to all of a sudden lose all of our money uh, because of some kind of an accident or something like that. Uh, and this is the same. You can insure your life, right? You, you buy life insurance for the fear that if something happened to you, your family would be left without. There are other reasons that people use life insurance too. It could come into legacy planning. It can come into tax reduction strategies sometimes. Sure. Sure. So there's a number of ways that that can be done depending, the more money you have, the more the insurance can be of a value to you. Now the next piece is also you can insure your income. This is one of those areas where you're gonna run out of money. One of the, there are a lot of statistics out there that talk about the biggest fear people have running out of money in retirement. That all of a sudden they're not gonna be able to maintain that standard living, that quality of life. What do you do about that? Well, one of the areas is being very smart about how you're investing, understanding what risks are in your portfolio, uh, understanding how annuities can work for you and can help you with both with regard to guaranteed income or just to help reduce volatility and give you some safety in your overall investment plan. But it's if you don't understand how these work and you want to avoid certain ones like variable annuities I've talked about before, and the reason for that is, and by the way, about uh, most of them, about three-fourths, I think somewhere, 75 to 80 percent of annuities on the market are variable annuities. Ooh. Well, if I'm going to invest in the market, do I need extra fees and costs reducing my returns? The answer is an <laughs> easy one, right? No. <laughs> so what kind of annuities? What about a fixed annuity? It's basically like a CD. What's the harm here? We're just looking at what's going to give me the most interest in a situation like that. Or immediate annuities. Sometimes people might get something like that where they're just looking at, I'm going to swap some cash to get a guaranteed lifetime income. And it can right. be for one life, it can be for two lives for a couple. You can have inflation uh, riders on it that will increase that income over time. You can have return of premium that says if I didn't spend all the money and I died, that some money still goes back to my family. So many different ways, but people don't understand them, therefore, they listen to the, the, the news about you know, variable annuities and they say, oh, all annuities are bad. No, that's like saying all stocks are bad. Yep. Okay, because someone lost money in a stock or because a company went out of business or right. went bankrupt and they lost that money that therefore the stock market as a whole is bad. No, it's understanding how the smart money invests in the market, how you can do so in such a way to maximize your returns while minimizing your risk. And that goes again, right? You got to get the risk down. And the next piece of that is where annuities can come in sometimes is you can blend that together in such a way to give you an extra foundation with regard to income, uh, guaranteed income for life, or again, to reduce your overall risk in your portfolio. A lot of ways is this, that this can be done. If you would like to see how it work for you, again, for the first 10 callers to my office, the number is 615, there it is on your screen, 615-376. 5325. Call my office. Tess is standing by. She'll get your information. She will then send you out a packet and a uh, checklist of things to bring to your appointment with me. She can schedule you right there if, you're, if you like. Um, and we'll go over all that. We'll look at what your income and your expenses. We'll look at assets, liabilities. This isn't just sitting down for a, a quick little chat to answer questions. <laughs> if it takes one visit, two visits, three visits, how much ever time to get you that comprehensive plan that you can really use to help you, all right, understand your financial future, to help you make the right decisions today that are gonna affect in, you in 10, 15, 20 years for the rest of your life, wouldn't that be a kind of a good thing to do? 
for your own personal self, right? <laughs> for your personal situation, that is. So again, for the first 10 callers, 615-376-5325. Tessa's standing by. She'll get your information, send you out a checklist of things to bring to your appointment with me. And when you come in to see me, I will give you a free copy of my book, Seven Steps to Financial Freedom and Retirement. All right, you know, one of the things there is tax. We've been talking about taxes. And yes. we talked a little bit about the subject. new potential, at least uh, for the new tax yes. law. The, one of the things here that I want to share is about taxes under the current tax law. Yes. <laughs> As you said, uh, October 15th is looming. Yep. So those that have had extensions, if you filed extensions, drop dead, right? Time it's to get time. it done. And if you file, the bad habit is a lot of times people will file the extension and think mm -hmm. that I have forever to file. So right. I filed an extension three years ago. So <laughs> keep in mind that the October 15th or actually 16th, if we want to be precise this year, is the deadline. And that means after that, you will get hit with 5% per a month penalty for failure to file. Um, so if you did not file an extension, hate to tell you that it's already been being applied mm -hmm. if you owe money. So it's very important to file your tax because those penalties are ones that you have and right now the government is basically broke. I know everyone's like, I hate the IRS, I hope they're broke, I hope I don't have, but the problem with them not getting a lot of funding is that they're finding other ways to get funding. And one of those ways is not to give any relief to penalties um, charged for just about anything. It's getting harder and harder to do that. So that being said, let's play it smart. Let's not get the penalties in the first place. Here's a, and I'll share another little neat thing about the October 15th and the, that deadline date. It's not too late. If you're self-employed, small business owner, that kind of thing, Guess what? There's a thing called a SEP IRA. <laughs> and you can still contribute to that SEP IRA up until October 15th. With the legitimate extension. Yes, with that ex with the ex yes, assuming you've done your extensions and everything. You can still put money into that SEP IRA to reduce your 2016 taxes. Last year's taxes, you can still put money in exactly. and reduce that down. And a substantial amount, potentially, depending on what your income is, you, you know, this could be twenty, thirty thousand right. dollars or more potentially that you could put into to a SEP IRA, reducing that taxable income, save you a bunch of money. So again, the deadline's just a couple of weeks away. You wanna take advantage of that. And if you're not sure, give us a call. <laughs> we can help you out exactly. and figure that kind of thing out. You know, one of the things when, and, and I should have put that out there, when, we, when people come in to see me, if you're one of the first 10 callers, for instance, this week, when Dr. Friday comes on, she always opens up her, her time as well. Uh, and what we do, if you need to help with taxes and stuff and you want to incorporate that in and have both of us at that meeting, we can arrange for that to be the case, okay, so that we can help you. Uh, we, one of the things we work back and forth with our clients, um, we're always calling each other during the week, <laughs> checking in about you know when a client comes in hey I got this situation with taxes exactly. can you run this for me so I can see what the effects gonna be make sure we're not triggering any hidden taxes or things and I'm talking about things like retirement accounts and and how much can yeah. we put in and what's this situation is it a little different this is one of the neat thing about having uh, your advisors work together is that they can make sure that you're getting the best of that, right? You're making sure for you that we're taking in consideration when we're talking about doing financial moves with regard to maybe cashing out some stocks or yeah. you know looking at capital gains and losses and what impact that's going to have. Are we going to be having any tax surprises before it happens. we do it? And it, and it also the fact is I'm really good at taxes. Hank's really good at financial, but when it comes to us crossing those different things, clients come in and they want to know, hey, if I do a conversion or I do this mm -hmm. or that, I don't know the rules. I don't really retain or even maintain that. That's his job, mm -hmm. and he's really good. So what's nice is when someone comes in more. I mean, there has he's right. About once a week, I'm on the phone with him. Hey, I've got a client in front of me. Here's a basic scenario, and then they can set up an appointment or whatever. But it's really helpful because you're able to get. And from my standpoint, I'm able to give my clients some basic guides sure. to go and say, you know, freeze what you're doing, or it, it seems like we can move this direction, or let's, you know, whatever, but give some reassurance because if you're going only to your tax person, unless they are a licensed financial planner, and I have a problem with someone doing multiple jobs because I can barely keep up with tax law and I do it 24 7, it seems like. Um, you need to make sure you're getting a second mm -hmm. opinion because my job is to reduce your taxes. His job is longevity. He wants to make sure when you retire, you have money to do that. And sometimes my job and his job clash because you can't do both sometimes. So sometimes you got to meet in the middle and say, what's the average tax bracket? What's a good time to do it? Yeah, this one of those. An example would be when you're seeing a tax person for the most part and they're running taxes, their their focus 
naturally is on the tax year in front of them. Right. So the, the decision making is based on, well, if we do this, this will reduce your taxes this year. Well, sometimes, and this is where Roth conversions can come into play as, an ex as just one example, is that it may be better, though, to pay a little more tax today, and I was talking about RMDs as an example, and I'll get, come back to that, to pay a little more tax today to not pay tax in the future or to minimize taxes in the future so that the long-term tax impact is what I look at. I look right. at, for instance, I'm looking at 70 and a half, you're going to have to start taking money out of those retirement accounts, what are called required minimum distributions. It's about 3.75% the first year, though the IRS uses an advisor, it's 27.4, but just to help you with that. So in those first few years, you're going to be taking out, give or take, around 4% a year out of your combined retirement accounts once you hit 70 and a half. Now there's all kinds of rules that go around that. If you're still working and you're contributing to a 401k past 70 and a half, these, these are still allowed and you can postpone on that 401k as far as taking RMDs. However, that required minimum distribution. But if you've got other retirement accounts, say from a previous employer, IRAs, that doesn't excuse you from doing those. You still have to do it. And guess what? What's the penalty? 50%. 50% of what it should Imagine. Been. If you were going to have to pay $10,000 in taxes on that, that's, you know, and you, or let's, let's back that up again. So on your uh, RMD, if you were supposed to take out 5000 and you don't do it, you get a 50% penalty on that. Exactly. 2500 bucks. That's a lot of money. All right, just for not doing something but that Hank, you didn't know to do, maybe. My, my banker's going to take care of getting me that uh, IR, RMD, so I don't even have to worry about it for my financial guy. Your custodians are, you know, ideally, and they do try, you know, for the most part to send out notices and say do this, but ultimately it's your responsibility. Right. And they will not and cannot act for you. You have to make that decision. So if they don't send you a letter, it's still your responsibility. Yeah. Requirement of distribution is one of those areas. So if I know that I've got a client, so when we're looking forward into the future and we're saying, and I calculate out what the rate of return, how much they have in their retirement accounts, how much they're going to add to it potentially, what rate of return are we anticipating they're going to make on it, I can now see at, at age 70 how much that money is going to have grown to. Then I can do the calculation for what the RMD is going to be. I can then look at their taxable income, doing those same kind of projections and see what that's going to be at age 70. And if that is going to cause them to cross over into another bracket, then we start planning. How can we pull money out now at the lower tax rate, even Get though it, it may increase taxes that. in that given year, right. it's the tax rate is what we're looking at. If over the lifetime I'm able to minimize your tax rates, that's what we want to do. That's what's going to keep more money in your pocket. All right. Well, we're going to take another break, but that's just one of the one example why working together is so important so that we balance each other out and we make sure that you're going to get the most benefit as well when it comes to doing your taxes. And that comes too when we do get into estate planning questions as well and we're and bringing uh, an attorney into doing wills and trusts yep. and those kind of things. All right. Quick break. When we come back, more about how to save money, how to save taxes, how to minimize risk in your life, how to maintain your standard of living and quality of life no matter how long you live, right? That's what we all want to do. Join us here. We'll be right back on The Retirement Report.